Welcome to Running For Real, a global community with a shared love and curiosity for running. Together we reconnect with the reasons why we love to run and discover ways it helps us become better people. Whether it's the quiet moments of a morning run while the rest of the world still sleeps, or befriending the strangers next to you at the start line of a race. We are here to connect with others who see running as the common thread that weaves our lives together. Come join me, Tina Muir, as I talk with people from all walks of life, united by a love of running. Hello, my friends. Welcome to episode 352 of the Running For Real podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I'm excited that you are here, and this is my first solo episode in a while. I'm going to call this practice for my audiobook, which I will be recording in a few weeks' time. Uh, Zoe and I wrote a book, in case you didn't know, Becoming a Sustainable Runner is coming out August 18th, as far as we know. May come in, may come in a few days earlier, but let's just say August 18th now. You can find it on any of your favorite major retailers. I'm talking about Target. I'm talking about Barnes and Noble. I'm talking about um, the A word. Yes, Amazon. I'm not going to judge you if you if you order from there. You can get it from Waterstones in the UK. You can get it from uh, your local bookstore. You can request it there. It will be everywhere you want it to be. Um, and you can also go to becomingasustainablerunner.com. Uh, it will show you all the places you can go, including for those of you who are international. Um, so go check that out if you haven't already, becomingasustainablerunner.com. I'll put a link in the show notes. But in a few weeks time, I'm recording the audio book. So if you want an audio version, that will be there. If you can pre-order now, that is the biggest help you can give me. And if you are listening to this solo episode because you want to hear about my race, that means you care. That means that you appreciate, or maybe, maybe you just want to listen to me talk about the struggles. I don't know. But if you can pre-order, that is the biggest gift you can give to Zoe and I. By pre-ordering, you are telling the uh, publishing world, you're telling Amazon, you're telling the bookstores um, that you want this book early, that this is an important book and they will likely store stock it in local bookstores. So please go ahead and pre-order if you can. All right, that's um, maintenance stuff out of the way. Becoming a sustainable runner.com. Today I am doing a solo episode. And the reason for that, I did not do one last week. We shared, reshared that um a previous episode. And that's actually the first time we have done that because I will be honest, um, I don't think I've spoken about this on the podcast yet, but you, if you get that, my email newsletter, which again, you can find at runningforreal.com, go sign up, especially if you enjoy these very casual conversations like this is going to be today. Um, or if you follow my social media, you'll know that a close friend of mine, Patrick, unexpectedly passed at the end of April. And friends, it hit me like a kick in the gut. Um, I really struggled. I was grieving a lot and I just didn't feel like myself for weeks. I was wrestling with what to do about this race. Um, especially when I found out that his funeral was going to be on the day of my 50 mile. And there's a reason to that. I'll spend more time talking about that in a few minutes, but beyond the race, I also just didn't feel like myself. I felt like if I'm a pyramid and the best part of me, the part that, uh, is my most extroverted and most outgoing and most joyful and most um, inviting was just like chopped off. Like I just couldn't access it. And so the idea of recording a podcast, of, of having time where I could talk to other people and put this bubbly self forward, it just didn't feel authentic. And you know me, that is everything to me. Being real is everything to me. And so that's why we reshared last week. And we wanted to do this week as just a share about my uh, weekend, about running my ultra a few days ago. And that's because it's it was a 50 or 52 actually mile race. And there's a lot to say there. But it also has pro prompted some questions in me that I think you'll be interested to hear about. And so I thought we would go into this today, talk about it and... Um, just share my experience. I know many of you appreciate that. And I will tell you the downs, you know, I will, um, as best I can. And I'm going to try and follow this along in chronological order, but there's, you probably can guess with me, there's a very high likelihood that I'll be like, oh yeah. And I remember this happened at mile five, but I'm already on mile 38. So I can't promise I won't bounce back, but I'm going to try and somewhat follow chronological order. So to backtrack, why was this ultra so important to me? 
Um, I mentioned to you about Patrick, um, his funeral being that day. I wrestled with it for weeks. Immediately when I found out it was an absolutely no way, I'm not doing this. There was no chance. I can't do this. I'm not going to do this. It was like end of conversation. And a few friends asked questions. A few friends even came together to ask questions together with me. But I still couldn't move past it. It felt like I was betraying him. It felt like I was choosing running over him, which is a very sensitive trigger that I have from my past that I put everything in front of my running and I just feel selfish for doing that. And I know that's stuff I need to work through on my own and I am working through it. But choosing a race when running didn't really mean anything to him just felt wrong. Do you remember Guy Winch from a previous episode? I'll put a link in the show notes to the episode I did with Guy. (laughs) Guy is a good friend of mine and he, while my other friends kind of carefully ask questions, Guy was very direct, actually quite harsh in some ways with the directness of what he said. He told me he was not going to accept that it was selfish, that he knew me and I'd be going out of my ways to do other things for people. And he talked about the grieving process and how it actually wasn't about that one day and how that one day didn't represent my friendship with him. Guy and I talked for about half an hour, 45 minutes, and it was just what I needed to hear. He reminded me that my friendship was not defined by doing this race or not. And he asked me what Patrick would have wanted me to do. And I knew the answer was to go ahead. He was so full of life, so full of joy. But I couldn't still quite commit. I left that conversation being like, okay, I'll think about it. Then I had lunch with his wife, with Patrick's wife, Monica. And she told me, you know, he would want you to do it. And you know, he's proud of you. So she, with her blessing, with her reminding me that he would have wanted that. I said, yes, I signed up. I recommitted. I booked my, well, actually, I'd actually, I'd booked my tickets already and it was happening. I still couldn't get quite excited about it. I felt like being excited about that day was wrong. It just didn't feel right within me. I felt like I was looking forward to the trip. I was looking forward to some time with my best friend or one of my best friends, Ryan Montgomery, who was also a previous podcast guest. And if you did the Together Run on Monday, you would have got to know Ryan and his group out trails. So I tried to focus on that. I'm getting time with my friend. I'm getting to see a beautiful place. And yeah, I'll get to run this distance, but it doesn't matter how long it takes me. I'm just doing it to do it for me. I'm doing it for Patrick. As soon as I stepped off the plane in Utah, I knew I'd made the right choice. It hit me like a wave. I felt so good about it. I talked to my friends. They'd given me their last pieces of advice. I felt very solid in my decision and now it was just time to enjoy it. Ryan and I traveled up the night before or the day before we got down to Bryce Canyon and uh, we stayed in this adorable little cabin, uh, which was just so, (laughs) so rural America, but it was so cute and I really loved it. And then that morning uh, we drove to the start line and off I went. I also loved that they had reusable cups at the start line for coffee. That made my environmentalist heart very happy. So I'm standing on the start line and I'm thinking about Patrick, yes, but I'm also thinking about the fact that I'm here. I'm on the start line. Because for those of you who don't know, this was actually my fifth attempt at an ultra. Fifth. And I'm going to give you a bit of insight into into some of those. In, what year would it have been? It would have been November, December 29, no, 2021. That was when I was first signed up to do an ultra. I trained for it. It was the Golden Gate Classic in Marin County um, near San Francisco. The day before we flew out, we went to get a routine COVID test, as you do, uh, or as you did at that time. And the woman came back saying, your kids, your girls are both positive. And Steve and I were like, what? What? So we didn't go. We toyed around with whether I should go on my own, but we decided not to. And yeah, I got covid So then, okay, let's reset. Let's try again. Let's do something else. So I signed up for the Bryce Canyon 50K. Yes, that is the same race for April 2022. Yes, April 2022. 
signed up for that race and I trained for it again. I felt good. We flew to Portland to visit Steve's family and we were coming on our way back via Salt Lake and it seemed perfect. I'm not adding extra flights. I'm not really inconveniencing everyone, anyone. And it was great. Uh, two days before we were leaving, uh, Bailey gets a stomach flu, vomiting everywhere. I'm well aware that my race is coming, so I am sanitizing the heck out of everything, washing my hands a hundred times a day. I managed to avoid it. Two days pass and we are getting ready to leave the next morning to head to Salt Lake where Jared Ward, another previous podcast guest and a friend, was coming to pick us up. Actually, no, he wasn't coming to pick us up. He had left his car in the parking lot for us to go get. And we were going to drive to his house. That night, while I was, we were getting up at 4 a.m. Um, the next day to go to that flight, I felt that horrible feeling that like, well, your stomach is like, blah, 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 like really angry. And I knew it. And I thought maybe if I just stay still enough, I can avoid it. No. <laughs> A few hours later, within about 10 minutes of each other, Chloe and I both start vomiting and I can't get out of bed for 24 hours. So I call Jared, he tell him, you know, we're pushing back and we moved our flights to the next day. And we ended up, I'm trying to remember now, maybe we pushed back two days. It might've been two days, but either way, we were going to fly out the, um, the, yeah, we were going to fly out the Thursday um, as our second option. We ended up flying out the Friday and Steve gets sick almost as soon as we arrive in Mapleton. <laughs> I'm still recovering. By this point, I've let go of the Ultra, but we thought maybe we could go down to Bryce in a few days just to check it out. But Steve gets it. And we're in Jared's house. <laughs> Jared's gone to Boulder Boulder. He's taken his family. Um, and because of our pushback, we didn't get really, we only got a few hours with his family, but we're just hanging out in his house. Um, Steve's not doing well. So we clean his house and we never got to go. And so that was attempt number two. <laughs> then I signed up for a race in the UK and I it was going to be an up and down Snowdonia, really hard race. But I thought, you know, why not? It was an hour or two from my aunt's house. We can go visit my aunt. The girls can stay there. My aunt was very adamant the girls can stay there. And, um, and so I signed up again. Another race. I'm excited. We're at my aunt's house. And, oh no, we were the day before we were going to my aunt's house. And the girls start getting a runny nose. My aunt is immunocompromised from having chemo a few years ago. And, uh, I think, okay, well, if it's just a cold, if it's just a runny nose, she can handle that. Then we get there. We spend a day with her two days by the two days, the girls are coughing and not just any old cough, like a nasty cough. So once again, I think, okay, this is not happening. I don't go. We toy around with the idea of Steve staying home, but I'm going up to this really hard race. What if I fall and I've driven there myself? What do I do? <laughs> So that's, that one's not, not to be done. And next I think, okay, I'm going to run a local Missouri race. Maybe the world's just trying to tell me to stop trying to go somewhere for it. Sign up for a race in Missouri. Actually, I don't think I did sign up. I was thinking about signing up in the de debate process. And then I fell, you know, I don't know if you remember this, but I fell very badly in the trails, like shredded my hands and knees like I had uh, I've been on a cheese grater. It was, it could have got infected. It was disgusting. Um, I'm not, I'm quite a squeamish person when it comes to skin hanging and it was gross. And so, so that put that race out of the picture. So then at this point I'm thinking, does the world not want me to do these? Am I just not destined for this? And I believe that. I just think, okay, I'm not meant to do this. I'm going to focus on my guiding. I'm going to focus on giving back. I seem to be able to do those just fine. And I let it go. But then a few months ago, I start thinking about it again. I'm doing these long trail runs. I'm loving them. And I just want to have a chance. So I talked to Ryan about doing this race. He lives nearby. He could do the 50K so, um, a few weeks or six weeks before 
five weeks before um, Western States would be a good um, good run for him to do. And we agree. We sign up. I get time with my friend and uh, we're excited. And then when the Patrick uh, Memorial is told to be that day, I think, right, this is it. The world's telling me just it's not for you. But fast forward to what date was it? Um, May 20th, 2023. I'm standing on the start line. I'm here. I'm doing it. And off we go. <laughs> so now I'm in the race. I'm wearing a shirt that Patrick's wife, Monica, made me on top of my tracksmith clothes. Um, the, pic- the shirt has multiple pictures of Patrick on it. I can take him with me to show me along, show him along the, the sights, the views and everything like that. I'm excited. And I get a few miles in. And I noticed that there's only about three or about four men in front of me, no women. And I'm thinking, I feel like I'm jogging. And there's only four men in front of me. Like, am, is this really how it's going to be? Or am I being done with my choices and going too fast? But I felt really good. The guys all got ahead. And then over the course, around five-ish miles, I started to catch two of them up. And I ran with them for a while. We're talking. They're both from Canada. And their names were Eli and Warren. And we're talking and I'm telling them it's my first ultra. I'm telling them that I feel good. And they're saying to me, we can tell this looks easy for you. So then we keep on running. We go through the first aid station, um, the second aid station. I forget to eat real food like I'd promised um, Elizabeth. Uh, who another podcast guest, Elizabeth in Pine. And I also forget, um, uh, Ryan had also told me to eat real food. So I missed that opportunity, but I feel good. I keep on going and I'm just enjoying these miles with friends. I get to the 18.8 mile uh, marker where it's the aid station. That's where Ryan is ready to restock me with more fuels, which I've been doing really well. I've been taking fuel every half an hour. Although I had at that point been to the bathroom two times, I think maybe three. And it wasn't like an upset stomach. It was just a, I need to go. Um, and it doesn't feel comfortable. So I'm going to go. I also accidentally took a caffeinated gel at the three mile mark and I, or 30 minutes in, and I'd also had a coffee on the start line. So I put that down to, I shouldn't have, I just made a mistake with my caffeinated gel. Then I say bye to Ryan, um, carry on with Eli, have another many, many miles with him, really just enjoying ourselves. And Earlier on, I had seen uh, Brian uh, Beckstead, the co-founder at Ultra, who, if you remember, I used to run for, so I knew Brian. We'd run with him for a little while, and he had told me miles 25 to 30 were truly spectacular. And so I was ready for that. I was excited for that. I felt good. Eli started to drop back around mile 26, 27 or something, and I just went ahead on my own. I stopped for like up to a minute at a time, just taking it in, looking around, really forcing myself to stop for a minute. (laughs) I had one moment where I stopped for a minute and right as I was getting ready to go, some bikers came past and I said, oh, you go ahead. But then I was like, wait, we're going uphill. (laughs) So I was like, actually, sorry, can I go past? (laughs) Because, you know, going uphill on a bike is much harder than running up a hill. I continue on and around mile 30, 31, I start to run out of water and I'm just like, I need water. It was so hot at that point. The sun was baking down on my head and I just was looking forward to having water and also putting sunscreen on and chapstick at the next aid station. I get to the next aid station. They're like, sorry, we don't have any sunscreen. And I'm like, no, Ryan had put some on my nose earlier, but I didn't have it on the rest of my body. And I just felt like I was frying. Thankfully, a lady offered to give me her sunscreen, so I had some. Uh, I ate some watermelon, I think, and maybe a few squares of um, a PB and J, and um, and then I carried on going to the hardest part of the course, um, and it was very hard. Miles, what would it be? Have been thirty three to thirty eight were this very these very steep hills. As I said, the sun was baking. 
Um, I was still doing really well with my gels, taking two, uh, one gel every half an hour and one set of chews every half an hour. But I was really starting to feel it. And the thoughts came through of like, what am I doing? Um, or if I was, um, if I was doing the 50K, I'd be finishing now. But I just reminded myself, just get to 38. Ryan will be there. He'll take care of you. You don't have to think anymore. Just get back to him. So I concentrated on that. And there was this one mile stretch back to the 38 mile mark where you're on ash asphalt and it was downhill. So that was kind of a bit of a relief after being up these very steep ups and very steep downs where it felt like you could easily tumble to your death. Uh, I'd also seen at that point some of the more iconic Bryce Canyon locations that you've probably seen pictures of. So beautiful, so unbelievable. And by the way, I was making sure I touched the ground quite a lot. I bent down and just felt the gravel. I was touching trees all day just to check in with them. I was talking to the trees, talking to the earth, and I really felt connected. It was it was a really special experience in that way with Bryce um, and just beautiful. So then uh, at mile 38, I, I get in to the aid station and Ryan's there and he said, how are you feeling? And I was like, I feel a bit like out of it, just a bit disorientated. And so he tells me to eat like pickles and melon and um, what else? Uh, well, pretty much asked me anything I wanted. I had some ginger ale at that point. I think I had like half a can of ginger ale and we ran on. Um, and at this point, I on my watch, or my thing, it says I've run 39 miles, I think. Um, and he says, this is 14 miles back. He'd just run towards me from the finish line. It was 14 miles back. Having a pacer, for those of you who haven't done ultras, is a pretty amazing thing to have. They take care of you. They say, or oh, this is at least my experience, uh, on your left, um, reminding you to drink, reminding you to eat, um, you know, you got this, all the compliments, uh, not compliments, but all the support you need, um, very much like just being there for you. It was such a nice thing to have, such a community thing. And I look forward to doing that many times for other people in the, in the coming years. The course was technical at this point. There were points where we had to like climb down these steep rocks and it was quite hard to get my legs coordinated enough to be able to do that. It was, it was difficult. I was tired, but at the same time, I felt really strong. Like I felt, I knew that I was going to finish. I knew that I was going to keep powering on. I didn't allow myself to think, what if I win? What if I blow up? I've only got an hour left because I, you never know with an ultra. And so I kept bringing myself back to the present and I was really proud of that. And my stomach at this point was really upset. Uh, and that last 10 miles, my stomach just Every time I ate something, um, which by the way, it took me like literally 10 minutes to eat a quarter of a sandwich. <laughs> I just didn't want to eat at this point. Um, I didn't really want to drink or do anything. I just wanted to keep going. But again, I was being reminded to do that. And he knew exactly what to say. Uh, we are very close. And so he knew the right, the right words to get me to, um, to eat. But I just kind of felt like I was... I just grumpy, I suppose. I just didn't want to talk to talk much. I just wanted to concentrate on one foot in front of the other, getting up these hills, going down the downhills and not falling on my face or falling over. But I did, even though I was really struggling and it's so hard mentally to be, to know you have 10, eight, seven, six, five, four miles to go. It feels like forever. But it's also amazing how you work through it and you get through it bit by bit. Just get to the top of this hill. Okay, let's just concentrate on getting down this hill where it's very technical. And then suddenly we were at the um, final aid station and it's two and a half miles to the finish. I had some Coke. I had a pickle. I had some pickled juice as well. And then we ran down and it was this dirt road, like very smooth, uh, yeah, smooth dirt, not really anything to trip over. And now I was in my stride. I was able to go along and just feel strong. My last two miles were under seven minute pace and I just felt powerful. Ryan ran ahead so he can video me finishing. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram, I very much encourage you to do that because you can see me finishing. And I did it. I ran 52 miles. I finished first woman, fourth uh, all time, women's time, 
and third overall. And then I got emotional thinking about Patrick, what I'd taken him on. And I was surprised that I didn't get emotional during the race, but it just felt right to do it then that we had done this together. I was so proud of myself and proud of what the choice I had made. I was so thankful for my friend. Um, and we could celebrate and it was really a good moment. Except now there's that thought in me of what could that mean? Actually, before I go any further, I want to just talk for a minute <laughs> about one of our brands because I am appreciative of the brands that make this podcast possible. So if you will let me share these brands, you know me, authenticity is everything I've told you that. So I want to just thank Athletic Greens for sponsoring this episode. You can get um, your AG1 by going to athleticgreens.com forward slash Tina. You've probably seen it around uh, 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. It is the one ritual that I keep every day. Okay, that's not true. I would say 90% of the time I take it, sometimes when I'm traveling or sometimes when I'm flustered and rushing out the door, I don't manage to get it. But 90 to 95% of the time I drink my AG. It's the one thing I do that I can actually stick to. It makes me feel good. It takes care of my gut health. It takes care of my immune system. And it really is worth all the hype that you see. I love my AG1. I love the taste of it. I love what they do. I love that it is just the one thing that takes care of all the things. So you don't have to have a million different pills to take. And because you're my friend, you can get a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2 with your order. And this is secret information. If you sign up now, there will be something particularly relevant to me that you will get in a few months if you catch my drift. So go to athleticgreens.com forward slash Tina to check that out. I also want to thank Allbirds because while I did not wear Allbirds in this uh, trail race because they're just not ready for that yet, their trail shoes to handle that many miles. I do do most of my running in my Allbirds tree flyers and I love them. I also spend most of my time in my Allbirds tree dashes, which I love, and the loungers, which I wear for evenings out. You'd be hard pressed to find me not in a pair of Allbirds because I really do love their shoes. I love that they're sustainably made and I love that this brand cares. They are a public company that really cares about the environment. They're always pushing, innovating to find ways to make our world more sustainable, to do their part to reduce emissions and push other brands to do the same. Now, if you use the link in the show notes, you can get a free pair of socks if you add that to your cart when you order from allbirds.com. Again, I recommend the tree flyers as a running shoe and the tree dashes as just a day-to-day -day shoe. And the loungers are really comfortable and great for going from day to night if you just have one pair of shoes for travel. Allbirds.com um, uh, and if, it's probably easier if you use the link in the show notes to get that free pair of socks. Add it to your cart um, through my link and you will get that with your order. Okay, so let's go back. So I'm now at the point where I've done this and it's gone pretty well. Um, I didn't really do the training I could have done. I skipped a lot of runs. I prioritized everything else. My family, yes but also my work many times. I didn't eat nutritionally particularly well. My protein was very low most days. and I just didn't do a great job of taking care of myself. So now for the first time since I quit in 2017, I'm wondering, do I want to try this? Do I want to maybe not step it up that much, but just commit a little bit more, run a bit more, try and eat better and have one build up to a race to see what I can do. Because looking back on that race, doing it at that level of altitude, seven to eight and a half thousand feet, that many miles when I've never done it before, the minimal training that I've done with zero workouts and some long runs and loads of skipped things. I'll be honest, it makes me wonder. I don't know the answer. I may change my mind. I'm having my time off now. I'm enjoying it. But I wasn't sore the next day. Can you believe that? <laughs> I can't. I was not sore the next day. And so it has me wondering, like, I did hold back. I know I did. 
but I wanted to do it that way because I wanted to finish this. That was what I wanted to do. But I'll say I'm curious. And so I'll keep you posted on that because I don't know what the, what I'm going to decide. And I'm not saying that I'm already leaning towards it because I don't know. But I just wanted to share some updates with you. Again, I encourage you to go or pre-order Becoming a Sustainable Runner by myself and Zoe Rome. You can go to becomingasustainablerunner.com. That's a massive thing you can do to help us. And you can go check out the videos on my Instagram if you want to let, uh, watch more about the race. There's plenty of videos on there. I appreciate you. I will see you on Monday for another Together Run. Oh, actually, will I? Because I'm taking my time off now. So I probably won't see you on Monday for a Together Run. Maybe a Together Walk. We'll see. And I'll see you next Wednesday for a free episode. And then next Friday, we'll have a regular episode. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate, appreciate each and every one of you that's reached out to congratulate me. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. The Running For Real podcast and everything we do here at Running For Real would not be possible if it wasn't for the Running For Real team. While I am the person who you hear from most often and the, maybe the face of the brand, the rest of our team are such critical pieces of what we do. And without them, I think I'd just be running around in circles with ideas. So I want to take a moment to thank our team. To Jeremy Nessel, who's been with me since the very beginning. Kat McKay. Sally Pontarelli, Kelsey Wang, Sandy Gutierrez, Louise Murphy, Andrew Basola, Alexandria Will, and Maria Vargas. Thank you to each and every one of you for all that you give to Running For Real and our community. I appreciate you, and I'm so thankful for having you as a part of the team. Mm -hmm.